everybody and thank you for joining. Um, we will be getting started in about three minutes. Our session on discussions on YPs and the future of SP, where we will be talking about the merger among other things. I'm going to get started in just another minute or so. Do you want to allow as many people to join the conversation as possible? Uh, the purpose of these bootcamp sessions is really to hear from you guys and uh, make the most of this uh, international opportunity for all of us to meet together, discuss some important topics, and uh, share our expertise. Hopefully, a few more. As part of that, we will be um, doing a few polls, uh, discussing, uh, having some discussion points. And, and we'll be good to go. So before we get started, um, if you miss any of the sessions um, today or if uh, you have to jump off the Zoom meeting or anything like that, um, we will be live streaming everything to YouTube. So you will be able to watch all of this uh, straight away uh, on YouTube. You can go back and rewind as we're, as we're joining. Um, but also um, all of our sessions, we have so much stuff going on this week. Um, if you don't know about the uh, YP Congress, this is the first year that we're hosting this event. Um, it's a collaborative event working with the Business Management and Leadership Committee, the Young Member Engagement Committee, uh, the SP Beyond the Borders Group, which is a European um, section-led group uh, where they uh, boost collaboration across the region. Uh, but we're also working closely with DNI and the Gaia Sustainability Programme as well for different topics there as well. Um, the session kicked off on Saturday um, with some great introductions from um, our current and former SP, uh, SP presidents. Uh, so that was a really good session. Um, and that kicked off our Ideathon, which is um, what started off this conference really. Um, 
it's bringing young professionals and students as well uh, to join teams and across the week they will be developing uh, sustainability uh, focused uh, projects and proposals and at the end of this week we will be reviewing all of those um, so I'm really looking forward to that uh, people have been sending in uh, slides and uh, their progress with these topics so um, I've already seen that there's some really interesting things going on. Uh, we're utilizing mentorship uh, with our more experienced uh, members during these sessions as well. Um, so it's a really, really good opportunity to network uh, and uh, learn about what's going on. And obviously during the week, we have these bootcamp sessions as well. So thank you very much for uh, joining us with this. Um, the aim of these sessions is really to learn as much from you as uh, it is from uh, us uh, giving information out. So uh, a lot of these topics, uh, they may be kind of useful for operations, section, op uh, section operations, or uh, just general best practices in your your day to day career. Uh, but we also want to have some more sessions like this. Uh, this is the first of our kind of group discussions uh, where we will be. Uh, we have some members from the Young Member Engagement Committee here with us, uh, Cassandra Dewan. Uh, Nihal and uh, Mohammed Al Sharaf as well. Um, thank you very much for joining us. And um, we will kind of be working with you to kind of get the conversation started. Um, but we really want to hear from all of you. All of you should have access to uh, unmute yourselves uh, to add any comments. Uh, and we're also going to be doing some polling as well throughout today. Um, if you're watching this on demand, please do add comments in the chat, um, even if uh, the event is uh, long past, because we really want to hear from you and kind of learn about this, this stuff. So um, I will start with a bit of a, a disclaimer. Um, this session, the aim of the session is not to kind of influence the decision on the merger or to even uh, kind of uh, guess at uh, what's gonna be happening over, over the, the next year or so. Um, I will be providing some, some brief updates on the status of the merger as it is at the moment, but we're a membership organization. Uh, this is obviously going to have a huge impact if it goes ahead on everyone here. Um, so we really want to hear from you as well. So this has a lot of uh, big topics associated with it that we'll be running through today. Um, we, you know, we have SP International people here. I'm SP International. Uh, we have an SP International Standing Committee here. But the views expressed on the call today, uh, this is more just our personal opinions, um, our, our thoughts, our kind of feelings about this. Again, we're not um, asking you to kind of put a, a pitch forward to, to decide how SP will go forward. But again, your uh, opinions really matter. So we do really want to hear from you um, uh, throughout all of this as well. Um, right, so let's get started then on uh, an update on the merger. So back in May, many of you will have seen um, the announcement, the, the public announcement that went out that uh, uh, explained that SPE and AAPG were exploring a merger to create a new organization together. Uh, so obviously SPE, we all know, uh, is focused on petroleum engineering, uh, AAPG, more on uh, exploration geology. And um, we share a lot in common. Uh, we've worked together a lot in the past. Uh, we plan to work a lot together in the future, regardless of, of what happens. Um, so the reason this kind of started obviously um a lot has changed uh, in the industry at the moment and with covid and things like that and from a financial and uh, operational uh, background you can understand that there's kind of stresses and strains going on at the moment but a lot of the discussions around this were happening happening well before this um there was a lot of discussions about how we are kind of overlapping with uh, content slightly um, in some places, but certainly um, overlapping with um, exhibitors at events, um, uh, speakers uh, who are kind of being torn between uh, different society activities and things like that. Um, and we share so much in common and there's always so much to be gained from broadening uh, our expertise and talking to other industries, other departments, because we all kind of gain 
a lot more perspective uh, and uh, expertise from, from this as well. So uh, as well as uh, those kind of aspects as well, there is a lot of changes going on in the industry at the moment. I'm sure you're all aware. Uh, many large companies are kind of rebranding, no longer oil and gas companies, but moving to more energy companies. Um, universities, similarly, are um, perhaps adapting their courses to broaden. Some people are uh, removing their petroleum engineering courses altogether, but there's still a really important need for uh, the products that, that we work with. Um, so there's a, a tricky balance there as well. And um, obviously, as part of merging discussions, uh, it is an opportunity as well for us to kind of reevaluate where we are and how we should move forward. And that is exactly why I want to talk with you all here today as well. Um, because, again, you guys are the experts in these areas. Um, you kind of understand the topics better than anybody else. Um, and we really, really want to hear. So let's uh, have a look at that. And I know we, we don't have a massive group here with us today, but I'm going to start off with just an initial poll. Um, just off the bat, uh, without any prior discussion, with just kind of your general feelings so far. Um, do you think the merger is a good idea? And then what we'll do is we'll come back to this question at the end and see if your opinions have changed at all. Uh, it's very interesting to see. Um, if you haven't used uh, Zoom before, um, hopefully you should have a, a pop-up screen that will allow you to, to vote. Uh, if you're on a, a phone or mobile device, you may have to kind of look at uh, some of the side tabs. Uh, but we'll do that. And we'll give it maybe 10, 10 more seconds. Few more of you yet to go. Okay, so I will close the poll there and share the results with you. So, forty percent say not sure, sixty percent say yes. So that's um a good. Uh, I would I'd say that's quite a uh, an interesting uh, reflection of the group here. I'm sure many of you have thought about this a lot already, but if you're coming to this meeting, uh, then you're probably curious <laughs> at least about uh, the different implications of this uh, as well. Um, so thank you very much uh, for contributing to that poll. Let's say we'll have a few more polls going forward uh, and we'll come back to this at the end and see if uh, those people who are not sure uh, have changed their minds uh, throughout. So let's think about some of the discussion topics. Um, aside from uh, like the actual uh, logistics and things like that, um, a lot of the topics that we've been seeing, um, both positive and negative on, on social media and things like that, uh, have been around how far SPE should broaden its remit, uh, or not maybe not SPE, but the, the new organization, how far it should broaden its remit. So I'm gonna start off with another poll before I go to uh, speak to some of you in the, uh, on the panel here. Uh, let me just bring this poll up. So slightly different poll. Um, uh, give you a good amount of time to read through that. Should SP broaden its remit? And if so, how far? So I think this comes to the crux of uh, what many people are concerned about when it comes to the merger. So the options we've got here, they're multiple choice, so please do feel free to tick the ones that are most important to you. You can uh, tick multiple ones. So um, range from, oh no, actually, no, this isn't multiple choice, sorry, uh, that's the next poll. Um, so to either stay focused as we are, only add established AAPG technical areas, uh, widen topics, but keep within the industry. So upstream, upstream, downstream. Uh, widen topics, but only to relatable uh, skilled fields. 
uh, hydrogen offshore operations, geothermal, that kind of stuff. I know many of you are already kind of working on these kind of areas. Uh, whether we should incorporate all energy related fields of expertise. So if we should embrace full uh, range, so wind, solar, geothermal, I suppose that does also include things like coal and uh, other areas as well. Uh, to widen topics to include applications to uh, petrochemicals. Um, or alternatively, we are too broad already, already, we should become more specialists or something else. Uh, if you have any other opinions, please do them in the chat as well. So I will end the poll. Hopefully that's enough time for you. And I'll share the results with you here. Hopefully you can see this on your screens. Uh, I will take a quick screenshot of this so I can add it in for the recording. But some of you are saying, well, uh, one of you, I suppose, is saying um, to stay focused as we are. Um, but the vast majority are suggesting we should widen topics and not just widen the topics, but to go beyond uh, what we're talking about at the moment, so beyond our industry. 43% uh, saying uh, to related skilled fields. Um, but 86% of you, the uh, vast majority, are suggesting we should incorporate all energy fields of expertise, wind, solar, geothermal, hydrogen, nuclear. And also uh, two of you have uh, said to one topics to include applications of petrochemicals as well. So there's some interesting things on there. Um, I'd like to open it up to our, our panel now. So Nihal, our chair, uh, I'm not sure if you are able to Mute or speak at the moment, but um, you're at COP or have just come back from COP. Um, what is your view on um, on these? Uh, I, I would like to keep this uh, uh, like the results anonymous. I don't want to call anybody out. But um, would anybody uh, be willing to give their opinion on this? Why they've uh, uh, said what they've said essentially. So we have a, a few different opinions yeah. on there. Now, thank you, go ahead, please. Uh, I can, so I'm, I'm really sorry I cannot uh, open my camera. <laughs> That's okay. uh, so um, I, I actually said we should include more geothermal um, and car carbon capture and all these low carbon technologies. Because um, if we look at the energy mix in 2030 and 2050, Fossil fuel is not really going anywhere. So um, we might reduce the production, but uh, it won't completely stop. So it's good to stay focused on the um, oil field or like oil and gas, which is the current focus, but also incorporate more of the energy mix. So we look at all energy related fields rather than just focus on one source. So that, that was my personal opinion. I, I did not choose the petrochemical thing, but mm -hmm. I think it's also a good idea because um, we are looking into kind of emitting fossil fuel from being an energy source, but it's still a, a very important feedstock to a lot of industries. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think also uh, incorporating uh, something as, you know, energy uh, or sorry, industry related would be uh, beneficial as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. That, that's I, I put that in there because I, I often think one discussion that and always had some some of the other applications of those petrochemicals are often seen as a kind of an aside to the bulk of it. Um, so a lot of the money kind of comes from the energy side of the industry. So if we did cut out the energy side of the industry altogether, um, mm -hmm. would the rest of it even be sustainable as an industry? Um, it would certainly probably get more expensive. Um, yeah. uh, so, you know, there's a, a lot of interesting kind of repercussions of that that I don't, I haven't really heard many people discuss so far. But um, mm -hmm. there, there was one person who said, uh, stay focused as we are, and um, I don't want to call them out, but um, I would love to hear from them if they are um, willing to do so, if you're willing to put your hand up or 
pull through because um, I, I guess from, from the comments that come through, that is quite reflective of a, a large number of, of people that I've seen. Um, because obviously people join a society because they want expertise, like the most detailed expertise that they can get on a, on a particular field. So by broadening to as many topics as what we're talking about today, it does, uh, there are some concerns from some people, completely valid, um, about, you know, are we diluting the information that we come through or are we just expanding? Um, so I don't know if, uh, if people are willing to talk <laughs> about that, but um, uh, is there anybody else? So please do raise your hands if you want to kind of jump in at any stage. I'd love to kind of hear more about this because uh, you are, you do have different opinions. I'd love to hear more about uh, what you have to say. A few deliberate awkward pauses. Again. No? <laughs> we may stick to that. This is why I wanted to use the pause. Oh, yes, please go ahead. Okay. So I looked at it from a bit of a different perspective when I was mm -hmm. reviewing the questions that you sent us. Mm -hmm. And what I was thinking was that we should aim to include every department in an energy company because approximately 50% of engineers move away from technical rules, right? Mm -hmm. To more managerial rules as they progress in their career. So I think because of that and is the only way to move up the ladder that is fundamental fundamental to have an understanding of every aspect of the business so for example we have little knowledge of the job function of hr besides like the high and the fire right mm -hmm. <laughs> so i think um we need to start including other departments or other disciplines besides only the engineering disciplines mm -hmm. definitely that's a really good way of thinking about it um Kind of want to know what the other departments are doing. Uh, Mohammed, did you want to, to jump yes. in? Yes, I will add something like for Sandra and we have, I totally agree with this trend, especially um, when I was in the university, I showed this trend. Uh, a doctor in, in my university said to, me, to us not to be a petroleum engineer, but it's about being an energy engineer. So, um, as you, as you know, you see Total, you see PP have uh, something like um, trending uh, and direction at 2050 don't have uh, any carbon emissions or zero carbon emissions, which eliminating the petroleum this as overall. So it's, it's, it's a must for SPE to change its, its direction for being a petroleum industry society to being an energy society, including also the petroleum engineering all the sudden upstream, downstream, and midstream. It's it's um, about being more general about the energy, and also it's it's I think from my side, it will offer more opportunities for SPE members to 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 have a direction in energy, especially we have the guidance from SPE. So if you have the directions from SPE to directions to be an energy engineer. It will be more focused and will be more efficient for engineers uh, or members of SPE. That's my opinion for this point. Definitely. It would be great to know from, from you all if you, you share those experiences as well. Um, I, I've heard from like oh, with some of the other sessions that we run, such as uh, ATC uh, and uh, yeah, some other the town halls and workshops and things that we've done. Uh, on, particularly on uh, job recruitment and things like that. Um, it would completely agree with what um, Mohammed has, has said, that people are looking for a diverse range of skills rather than necessarily highly specialist uh, skills. Um, so with that in mind, do you think there's, there's still room for these specialist topics? Do you think we are, as a society, too specialist? Is that no longer reflecting it? Or do you think there is still... Uh, a good position for, for and demand for uh, having such depth into these areas. Hello, everybody. It's Mark speaking here. Go ahead, Mark. A few thoughts from my side, uh, because I would like to actually know why people are joining SP, because I hear from a lot of people that they want to be in the society for purposes of networking. Mm -hmm. And of course, in that sense, if we are broadening uh, our areas, 
we will have more people, there will be a bigger chance to network with people even outside uh, of our areas. But uh, if I'm working on a project and I need some specialist help, I also use the society and I try to connect with people to discuss about specialist topics. So maybe when I'm being recruited, there's a large set of skills that is required from an HR point of view. But when I'm working as a reservoir engineer, it doesn't necessarily matter if I have these uh, additional skills or not to complete my job uh, efficiently. Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, I think it's very important to keep the, the specialist topics and not to dilute um, the knowledge that we have in our society. Mm -hmm. Of course, broadening is, is always nice and it offers a lot of new opportunities, but I think we have to keep the core of our society um, structured around the expertise that we have already collected and built up. Excellent points. Now, you want to step in? Yeah, sure. So uh, I like Mark's points. Uh, this is why I also take the part that we need to stay specialized, but then add more things. So we, we don't really need to phase out the petroleum thing. We, we have to keep that and just keep building on it. So we are the home for as Shawaf said, energy engineers rather than just petroleum engineers, right? Um, and also to add to Cassandra's point, uh, all the companies are kind of changes, like changing their their colors, like uh, the uh, the tele energies, basically, all the colors of all energies. So. Yeah, I would definitely say we, we stay as petroleum engineering society for these expertise, but we, we add add on that. Um, for for other topics like the um, CB and, and all these kind of things, it's it's very important to have them because um, we're at, at the end of the day membership society, right? Mm -hmm. And People actually come here to learn more about the transferable skills, uh, you know, besides the technical skills. So if you or if you're just a junior, just graduated from college, where is the best place to, you know, be a leader and actually, you know, work within a, a leadership role and have some sort of responsibility. So you can go to a company and say, yes, I've been the leader and I've led one, two, three, four. It's again, the side of petroleum engineers and similar societies. So this is, I would say uh, a very important component of the SP experience in general, and it should not be phased out. Manny, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, uh, James. So adding on to what Nihal is or actually saying is to not really phase out the, the specialized things and really focus on that or in what's going on existing. But adding on to what Mark has said that or me being a reservoir engineer, what we see in our company these days is uh, there are a lot of incoming of data analysis that we have to do these days. And uh, people are now more focusing on not using Excel and PowerPoints and they want more like Power BI or W for data visualization. And I somewhere down the line feel that even the students are really working hard to, to acquire the skills. And even in the interviews and the job portals, I see that these are the skills that are really, really important for them to be added. So uh, I'm not sure if SPE or is incorporating that or at a massive scale, but I, I do feel that these, these tools and uh, skills of visualization that is more focused on data analysis and or jobs such as data scientists and machine learning engineers should be added more uh, with in collab or maybe embedded with the existing production drilling and a reservoir engineering mm -hmm. so yeah that's that's the point that i want to make here mm -hmm. Definitely. thank you so much i think there's some really good points there because um it it goes I, I really like how mark's points again about um how it depends why people are, are joining as as a member and um i have noticed with some of the comments that there is a bit of an age age divide and um we might come back to that that topic as well in a bit more detail but um 
it, it makes sense that for students and younger people, the, the kind of networking elements of SPE um, would be like the more beneficial things. They already, uh, particularly students, they already have access to a lot of uh, technical knowledge and they're, they're pretty much instructed on, on what uh, they need to learn. And even at the early stages of your career as well, um, that could be determined by the company that you're, you're based at. So like the networking elements, the kind of socialization uh, network um, elements, that all benefits from, from broadening the group of people uh, that we um, uh, associate with. Um, but when it comes to, you know, suddenly needing to get that uh, technical expertise, um, yeah, we kind of rely on this uh, specialist group. So if, if that's the case, uh, is SP kind of broadening? If we, if we add lots of uh, lots more technical disciplines to our remit, would, would that achieve those goals, do you think? Uh, or maybe it needs something different from, from the technical disciplines, maybe. So we have technical disciplines and then we have maybe other standing committees that, that reflect those topics or something along those lines. And uh, do people feel that there's a, a, it should fit to the current uh, system or do you think things need to uh, reflect these different needs that we've talked about? It's a tricky one. It is, it is a tricky one. Actually, the problem is, James, is um, if we, for example, talk, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but if we talk <laughs> about CCS, we're not only talking about the technical aspect, we're also talking about the policies and, and the economy and technology. So it's not one thing. The value chain is long and it has a lot of elements to it. So there is a part that is strongly connected to the petroleum engineering part, which is, I would say, the capillary pressure, the capillary trapping, um, how CO2 is stored uh, under underground, basically. But then there are elements that are related to capture, transportation, and basically source to um, sync connection. That's not only pipelines, that's, um, you know, government involvement, risk on investment, when it comes to banking, that's, that's a lot of things. So mm -hmm. what is the, the thing that we need to focus on? Are we focusing on the whole value chain so we understand everything or we're just focusing on the technical parts, uh, part of things that strongly relates to the core of the society, which is the petroleum engineering kind of thing, right? So I think the question it's exactly your question, but it's mm. looking into a different angle. So I'm, I'm, I'm really, I, I don't know, honestly. Mm -hmm. I, I, as you were saying that, I was wondering um, how well some of these other areas would fit into our existing structure, uh, uh, as it were. And I, and I know we're kind of <laughs> talking about the merger, but just the, the general uh, broadening of topics as well. Um, for example, we do have technical sections that, that explore CSS and things like that already. Um, uh, offshore operations um, would certainly kind of include, uh, well, not exclude wind farms and things like that into those, those kind of technical areas as well. And again, like the environmental political side, uh, you could conceivably see that under either the management group or, um, or other standing committees or other groups like such as Gaia. Um, there doesn't seem to be any need for us to kind of limit ourselves uh, with those groups at the moment um, but again it, we, we kind of rely on the expertise of our members um, so uh, I guess the worry is that if we start talking about topics that aren't necessarily the uh, expertise of, of our members then the, perhaps the quality of those discussions will, will drop um, or maybe not drop but like it could affect the, the kind of high technical level when you compare, you know, we have so many reservoir engineers and our reservoir engineering content, you know, will be like the best it can be. If we start talking about um, other, other issues, then, you know, we're petroleum engineers talking about political issues or we're petroleum engineers talking about other issues. So, um, uh, yes, uh, now did you want to? Well, yeah, I get your point, but then 
it's also connected, you know. So mm-hmm. I think everyone on the call and everyone is watching uh, that is watching us have passed through the field development phase in their life, right? So one of the key things that you need to look at when you're developing your field is your economy, your return on investment, your net positive value and all these things. And you have to look at the regulations in, in that place as well, like the no flaring rule or something, mm-hmm. right? So it's, it's not something that is completely detached from the technical side of things. But I would say, you know, in reflection to what you just said, um, just kind of keep the things that are closely related to the technical part within the um, the loop, I would say, but not maybe not go too deep that it's far, far away from the mm-hmm. core specialty. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, now. James, it's Mark again. Please go ahead, Mark. Um, I also think that... Um, we really have to understand what our aim is. So we would like to broaden the topics so that we can attract more people to our society. For example, if we had uh, specialist topics on hydrogen, it means we will have probably members or hopefully we will have members who join our society because they have the expertise in hydrogen. And potentially reservoir engineers, geologists, or whoever can attend these high quality presentations uh, presented by by specialists from their own areas and we can learn from them. Or simply we just want to add new topics or new standing committees or, or broaden the society, but not to attract new members, just to keep, just to keep the membership as it is, let's say, mm-hmm. and, and try to figure out something um, among us. I think uh, if we want to broaden the society, it means that we should bring in additional expertise. Definitely. The the question is also like um, if we bring in additional topics and these will be presented on an ATC and the reservoir engineer goes and attends and there will be like I don't know reservoir engineering sessions and parallel there will there will be sla- uh, sessions on on legal concerns or political things which one will the person choose mm-hmm. will they go to the technical sessions or will they go to the political or or legal or HR or whatever sessions. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a difficult choice. So I think we have to understand better why, why our members are currently members of the society. What is driving them? Is it really the technical topics or is it uh, something else that they want? Thank you, Mark. Uh, Mohammed, please go ahead. Yes, thank you, James. Uh, I will add for Nihal and Mark uh, what he, they are said. I'm, I'm saying about the change at any society, any organization, and at any company, it's not uh, at, coming at one day. So my suggestions for SPE, that you can, as Mark said, that you can attract the ex- ex- more expertise in something like creating a new committee or standing committee for energy or renewable energy um, or sustainable energy technical disciplines and regulations, as Nihal said. So it will be a general committee at the beginning. And for further years, I think it will be more uh, standing committees. As you know, as a petroleum engineer, we have only three disciplines, reservoir, production, and drilling. But if you see uh, in SPE now, we have more different committees in SPE. The standing committee like well completion, stimulation, and different committees, which is it's come after different changes and different uh, work on it and different expertise at every standing committee. So at the beginning, I think in SPE, we should attract more expertise in energy, especially in this uh, area of interest, like geothermal, like hydrogen. And uh, I think it will be the beginning of SPE as a only one standing committee. And then it will become with more standing committee at the further future. Not being at the beginning, we need to work for regulations or working for the technical discipline. It's good to have this discussion, but I think at the beginning, we need to have a general energy transition committee. Then it will be more uh, branches for this. That is my uh, suggestion and that's my opinion in, uh, about this point. I, I, it is added to Nihal and more points. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Mohamed. Uh, Cassandra, please go ahead. 
Yeah, James, I just want to add something. So you see where we always think, oh, the reservoir engineer or this engineer that we need to come out of that thinking. Like for me, I'm a process engineer, but I'm also a hydrogen engineer. I work on hydrogen projects. I also work on CCUS projects, right? So this is what we need to be telling the students. Yes, you have a degree in petroleum engineering, but you also have a skill set. And there are so many other things you could do besides petroleum engineering. Because most of these students do petroleum engineering. I want to be a drilling engineer. I want to be a, um, a reservoir engineer. And I think for me, my, my thinking is a bit different because in Trinidad, you have to do chemical, mechanical, electrical, those engineering first before you do petroleum engineering, right? It's offered as a master course. And because of that, I think it gives us more opportunities and more options as well. And this is what we need to say, yes, you're going to need subject master experts. And if you're passionate about a particular field and you think you can make a valuable contribution in that field, by all means, you know, be the best at it and pursue it. But we are in an involving industry. We are forever changing. We are cyclic and we can't think narrow minded. We have to be very open and think about learning the different um, segments or different sections of the industry. I'm a process engineer, but I learn about renewable energy all the time. I learn about CCUS. I learn about hydrogen energy. And this makes you more marketable. And this is what we should be teaching our students or even some of the YBs. You know, um, there are a lot of people, I'm a reservoir engineer, so they only apply for reservoir engineering jobs and they're not getting jobs. Okay, so you have a skill set. Apply outside of reservoir engineering apply to maybe even a management rule or HR rule. So as a society, we just need to think about that. And even if we have technical sessions, you know, at ATC, we had soft skills, we had leadership, we have technical, but let's be realistic. Most people go to conferences to network, right? <laughs> and that is like the main advantage of SP or the main um, benefit of SP is the networking. So even though we go to the conferences and yes, they're technical soft skills or whatnot, people don't always attend all the sessions. The main goal is to go there and network for whatever benefits they wanna get out of networking. Definitely. And I think that's such an important point that as a society, we need to be reflecting the, the careers and the needs of our, our members. So that it's, yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, Manny, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, James. So adding on to what Cassandra has said just right now, I, I believe we need more people or, like Cassandra who are working as process engineers and also having the, the kind of technical uh, superficial initial knowledge of pivoting into the CCUS or the renewable side of energy. And I believe that that's a great line where the students really believe that or the, the skills that they possess right now, be it in reservoir, be it production or drilling, are transferable to the, to the other sectors of the industry and the other domains of energy. And that what's make them make them believe that yeah we can also work as uh, someone as a CCUS engineer. So what Cassandra said that we need to apply them, and I believe when we add more people who have their expertise or probably the people people who have already pivoted on that side from being uh, petroleum engineers and now they're working on the renewable side of the energy. So those kind of people will attract more talent and more students. And I believe the students would agree with uh, more with them. And then probably when we are into that transition zone, uh, we may move to the renewable side after a, a long, long decade. But then uh, I, I believe that's what we should be focusing right now to, to focus such kind of people. Fantastic. Excellent. Thank you for that, uh, Manny. Um, so. I'm going to do another poll now with the way that the uh, this uh, discussion has gone. I think I, I know the answer to this, uh, but uh, we've talked a lot about all of this. Uh, we haven't really touched on AAPG. But the, so do you think if uh, the merger does not take place, we should still go ahead uh, with these discussions? I'll give you a few more seconds. Interesting results. 10 more seconds. Okay. 
And to pull there. So I will share the results. It's not quite as unanimous as I thought it was going to be, but um, most people are saying yes. Uh, and then one person uh, saying, no, we should not pull an affair without a merger. So really interesting. I think there's some really good points on there. Um, now I'm going to move on to uh, another area of, uh, you know, we're part of the, the YP uh, Congress. Uh, this is being led by the Young Member Engagement Committee. So I want to talk about uh, how the merger will affect students and YPs more specifically. Um, I think we've already touched on some really good points. Uh, Mark, you raised a, a lot of points about um, what people want to gain from um, uh, their membership with a professional society. Um, and that clearly affects uh, students and YPs very differently to um, uh, to maybe more senior professionals or retired professionals and, and things like that. So um, do people generally think that um, it's uh, it's better for students and YPs than, than uh, it would be for maybe senior professionals? It's better for the future of the industry um, rather than, uh, you know, perhaps the more established people. From the discussions I've seen, it certainly seems like the younger generation seems a lot more positive on this change. Nahal, please go ahead. Yes, uh, again, it's it's what Cassandra just said. Mm -hmm. uh, they need to be more open. Uh, we we don't really know what's going to happen in the future. I mean, at COP twenty six, you can see one thousand pledges, right? Mm -hmm. But you really don't know what's going to happen. So you have to always keep. Uh, an open mind, that's number one. You have to have a proper skill set, I would say, that can be, that can take you anywhere. Uh, the engineering skill set, the basic one, which is, which contains like uh, math, physics, uh, programming, fluid flow and, and porous media, fluid mechanics and thermodynamics. And these things can basically take you anywhere, right? As, as Cassandra, said it's it's basically a mix of mechanical electrical and chemical engineering that mm -hmm. yeah that you kind of need to, to add to your resume so you can be more um, flexible when an opportunity comes your way so yeah to answer your question um i would definitely see that this change would affect the young professionals more the than the senior people because they are just starting their careers and they are looking into really a different industry. It's still called the oil and gas industry, but then every bit of the industry is different than it was, I would say 10 or 20 years ago. So, yeah. I think that's kind of summarized things quite well. I know we've kind of touched on a lot of these points uh, throughout this discussion. Um, it is certainly interesting. I think all of the points raised uh, certainly impact people who are still at the earlier stages of their career, the people who are still kind of, uh, you know, then, you know, the, the kinds of issues that we've been talking about, um, you can imagine they're not really going to affect people who have been in their role for 30, 40 years and, and are quite established. Um, the kind of issues that we've been talking, it certainly do affect uh, the younger generation a lot more. Uh, so thank you for the input to that. So I want to kind of move on to um, perhaps the, the other side of this. Like, so SP, you know, we've been going for uh, over 30, uh, a, a long time. <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, we started off as a, as a, 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 a subgroup of another society. Uh, so, you know, this is all, the identity of, of our society has always been something that's kind of adapted and changed over time. Um, but do you think we, we would lose something from merging with another society? Do you think there are any aspects of SP that you think um, that we would lose? Or do you think it's purely a good thing for, for change? Does anyone feel sad not to see that logo anymore? <laughs> that I'm surrounded by. 
James, I think that's the only thing that I'm concerned about is mm -hmm. like the identity, right? It's a bit of a tricky question because both SP and APG are brands that are known internationally. Mm -hmm. And we are very proud SP members. Like we wear this on our, our shoulders, right? Our sleeves. Mm -hmm. And my only concern is what will a new society be called and how we will go about branding and marketing to ensure that we have the same weight or even more than mm -hmm. SP and APG on their own? Yeah, really good point. It's going to be a huge of marketing uh, issue. It will be, you know, it's going to be complicated. And, and as what's been said in the statements, this is very much a merger. It's not... Um, not going to be a, a takeover per se it's, it's uh, obviously aapg is a kind of by the number slightly smaller society than than spe but um i don't think it's going to be the same logo as spe with, with additional things it's going to be very much a whole new thing working collaboratively together with spe and aapg and the only kind of real way forward with that is to um create a new identity in that sense but as you say, um, people are. <laughs> I've seen people with a uh, petrol logos tattooed onto their arms. Um, so it's, um, I, I completely agree with you, Cassandra. It's, um, it's going to be interesting. Um, I mean, even programs such as petrol. I mean, uh, can we still, if we do broaden to uh, to the way that we talked about before, can we still call it that? Would that have to change? Um, obviously, things like student paper contest uh, and other other student programs aren't quite so uh, tied to, to Petra and its title, but it, it affects a lot of different things uh, in a way. And so we're obviously seeing that a lot in different companies uh, or changing their brandings and things like that. But there are so many different facets uh, to SP. Um, so is there any, any particular areas people would miss if it went, if it changed? Yeah, I would miss the logo, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, you know, for, for many of us, um, SP feels like a second home. So it's like changing your country's flag, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of the, um, the flag of us. It, it, so, for example, I'm from Egypt and... Uh, Cassandra here is from Trinidad and you're mm -hmm. from the UK and then mm -hmm. we're all under one thing you know so that we call home that is SPE so again it's it emphasizes Cassandra's point like how how are we going to be able to have all these people under one umbrella and they feel they feel like the same they feel heard they feel you know motivated to do more so yeah, I I'm I'm also concerned about this part. Definitely. So I don't think there's any um, been any any measure that's gone completely <laughs> smoothly in the past there in, in any sense. Um, uh, we've got some comments coming in through. Just uh, yes, I, I need to add something for Nihal. That I I can't imagine that you have. The, you don't have the logo of SPE. My office is full of logos of SPE. My helmet is full of logos of SPE. So to change this, this logo, it's, and this is like, it's very difficult for me. <laughs> very, very difficult for me. So I know that it's, it's about merging, but I think, um, as Nihal said, it's uh, how to have a one flag or one society combine, com combination between all these uh, societies uh, AAPG and SPE, and also the energy uh, direction mm. we have in SPE. It's very difficult. I know that. I know that. But I need to change. <laughs> I mean, it, it's almost an inevitable. We'll have to change. But I mean, I, I was looking at the um, AAPG logo and the SP logo next to each other, and uh, they're both globes. Uh, so, you know, you can imagine something that isn't too dissimilar to both uh, somehow working together. Um, yeah. again it, it touches on all of the things that we were talking about before exactly how wide a scope do we want to do if um like in the comments society of uh, energy engineers would that even work with with what we've been talking about um you know because you know that would imply coal that would imply nuclear that would imply uh, wind and solar and everything else but uh, so 
it's yeah. a big topic. Go ahead now. So also one, one thing that I would like to add, the, when you merge with someone, um, I don't know, I've never been a member of AAPG, obviously. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know about their culture. Uh, the company culture or the society culture is a big part. Mm -hmm. So we're used to a certain way of working. Um, for example, if I want to do anything at ATCE, I know who to go to, mm -hmm. right? Uh, with the new structure, things are going to be different. We, we will have to adapt and they will have to adapt. So this kind of transition period is also, <laughs> I think, would be difficult or like worries me a bit. Um, um, about the name Energy Engineers, I... I, I really didn't know because the other society is geologists mm -hmm. so maybe they won't feel included because again we're kind of taking yeah. over because mm -hmm. every time we had to pitch sp to someone we have to say see it's called society of petroleum engineers but really if you work in anything in the petroleum industry you can join right mm -hmm. so we we really don't have to explain the name so i don't think this will fly that's that's from my opinion maybe like I don't know, do you energy or something is more fitted. I don't know. It's not as straightforward as, uh, as you might think initially, is it? <laughs> it's uh, it's going to be interesting. And I'm sure it's going to cause a lot of debate. And the other reason I kind of bring our dentists is because, as you say, that if everything happens and, you know, we, we change a logo and then there's going to be a, an unusual period where, you know, we have committees from both sides and do our events fully immersed with each other or do we run them side by side or continue running them separately um there's going to be an interesting period of time before uh, i can imagine it feels like one one big society but uh it's certainly interesting um so with that in mind uh, i have another question for you all um, do you think merging is a risky thing for sp to do do you think it's the right time? Do you think it's, um, is it a risk or is this something that has to be done to ensure the future of the society? James, I think like at this point right now, that is the safe thing to do. And mainly because we're going through a period of change and companies are changing their names and logos. Mm -hmm. And even with the energy transition, right, it's a hot topic. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if we merge and keep up with the times, I think now is the right time to do it. So. Mm -hmm. There is obviously the risk of not doing it is uh, you know, potentially just being left behind <laughs> uh, uh, all this change. Um, so, yeah, so does anyone uh, disagree with it? Does anyone think that? Yeah, uh, can you hear me, James? You go ahead, promise. Thank you. Yeah, hi. Yeah, so about this, um, I think it's also the right thing to do in the sense that we do have our contribution to make to, you know, where the world is going. And I think um, the YMEC posted something recently about Bernard Looney not being invited to COP. Mm. So if we cannot be part of these conversations, we are still 70% responsible for driving the energy transition. That's the oil and gas industry. So if one of the things, one of the little sacrifices we have to make is, quote unquote, adapt, just so we can be recognized enough to be in those conversations, to be able to sit at those tables and, you know, make those decisions with policymakers, with governments, with individuals, with other organizations that are not in our industry, I, I do think it's a little price to pay. Mm -hmm. So I think for the greater good, for the impact we do intend to make, we, I mean, I would lean towards... Um, the reward than the risk. Definitely, really good points. Thank you, Promise. So. Yeah, I'll have to agree, um, really 100%. Uh, the key to stay competitive nowadays is collaboration, not fragmentation. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely 100% uh, with, the, with the merger. Um, while we're concerned about SP identity because it means a lot to us, um, as Promise said, Bernard Looney was not invited and Shell CEO said, I, I want to come and they said no, right? So yeah, we have to take an action as 
as an industry. And since SP is the really home to all petroleum engineers, I would say uh, this is a very important step and uh, it is the right time to, to do something. Um, if we did not do something, we would be left behind. Like the very famous story of Nokia uh, rejecting Android and then just no one he hears about Nokia anymore. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to bring this to, to a kind of um, a practical point in that um, I did, I had a meeting with um, European uh, chapter officers yesterday and many of them are fe uh, feeling kind of quite vulnerable when they're running their events and you know they do get a lot of criticism um, from you know just even having the word petroleum engineers on their on you know on their events and you know when they're trying to run big events it's not something that they they, they kind of want to be dealing with and sometimes they feel like they're not able to have these conversations and, and sometimes these events and that's a real issue that I, I think particularly our students and particularly our students in Europe uh, are feeling so um would the changes of help with that do you think do with that um is that kind of part of this risk uh, that if we don't change them then we will be perceived as kind of not being part of, of the, the transition. Has anyone had experiences like that from, from their local events? Well, um, I met a few people at COP26 and, um, you know, you talk with people and then they ask, so what do you do? Um, mm -hmm. When I told one of them I'm a petroleum engineer, they said, don't say this again. <laughs> Just like keep it lay low. Um, and yeah, I totally get it because you see these people, they think you're great and they think that what, whatever you're doing towards the energy transition is great, but then you invite them to speak at Society of Petroleum Engineers. They say no because the word petroleum is in it. Mm -hmm. So I've been facing this situation for like two weeks right now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so yes, yes. The answer to your question is yes. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, I, I, mean, I want to bring it up because I, obviously when we're all talking to each other, um, it's not really an issue that, that you know, we face in that sense. You know, we're all, we're all talking amongst colleagues and friends here. Um, but yeah, see, when we start talking about trying to work more collaboratively with other industries and with other societies and things like that, I, think I feel like that is a, a real issue. And I've, I've heard that from... Um, uh, people are searching for sponsorship and things like that so if if you're a company that's just changed its branding to kind of move away from from the petroleum side of things even if it is something that they focus on predominantly um then it's almost counterintuitive to then go ahead and, and support an event uh, that has the word petroleum in its title so i can imagine even from a very basic level that's um an impact as well um so again, I think that, that does kind of support uh, the discussion that uh, it's more risky to kind of not do anything. So uh, that's a, some excellent conversation there. Thank you. Um, so I'll, I'll, there's just one more topic I want to bring up before we, we close up today and say, is there, just in a general sense, is there anything you would like to see from the merger specifically? Maybe something we've discussed already, but that's kind of like one thing that you want to see happen. Um, and it's just, change in the society generally does anyone have any kind of key points that you think if only one thing changes this is what i want it to be james for me because i have also worked closely with apg in trinidad mm -hmm. i would like to see more collaboration because that's something i noticed with apg they tend to collaborate a lot across um sections or countries or even within the regions, right? Mm -hmm. And the students get to move around a lot. For example, in Trinidad, the students from Suriname tend to come for a week or two weeks, and they do a lot of field trips and activities. And the same thing with Trinidad, they go Guyana or Suriname. And it's the same within Brazil, I think, with other chapters. So, and this is something I think SP lacks a bit, is collaboration. Um, I don't know if it's because of funding or whatnot. So hopefully, that might be one plus of collaborating. I mean, merging with um, APG is that maybe there'll be more collaboration across regions and countries. 
Excellent point. Thank you very much, Cassandra. Okay. Well, that is um, the end of the hour and the end of. Uh, oh, Nihal, do you want to go ahead? Or? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, uh, for me, it's it's not a thing, but maybe a program uh, merging the two expertise from the geology side to the engineering side of how the oil and gas industry can help the environment because we, we're doing a lot of things from waste management to carbon capture to geotherm to like a, a lot of things. So maybe I would like to see how these joint expertise together can come up with something or a theme of how the oil industry is helping the environment. That's what I like to see. Thank you very much, Sam. Okay, everybody. Well, um, that has exhausted my list of topics I was hoping to go through today. I hope this has been fairly interesting. I found it absolutely fascinating hearing all of your opinions from different countries, from different regions, from uh, different uh, work backgrounds, careers, all, all sorts were kind of coming together today. So um, I really appreciate your contributing uh, so much to this conversation. Um, as I say, if you've missed any of it, uh, please do go back and watch the, the YouTube version. Um, we'll make sure to kind of uh, share that. And I do encourage other people to kind of um, watch this as well as much as possible because um, uh, it's going to be an interesting year or two uh, where this uh, happens. I have no idea what kind of time frame uh, a merger could potentially happen on the scale, um, but there's a good chance that uh, we'll be looking for more input from members uh, to inform those decisions going forward. And as I think we've seen from today's session that um, it's not straightforward. Uh, there are positives and there are negatives. And um, you know, uh, as we discussed, it will be a little bit sad to, to see that logo go. But um, I will end with the final poll. So after all this discussion, back to the first question, after all of this, do you still think the merger is a good idea or not. Here we go. Give it a few more seconds. Okay. And then the poll there. A little bit different. Some people who weren't sure before have moved over to the S camp, but I think generally uh, from the views. It's, uh, I think, that, that kind of risk question, it's just as risky to not do anything as it is to, to kind of embrace the change that's going on around us. So um, thank you so much, everyone. There's some really, really good points there. Uh, I think uh, we will try and bring this together in, in some kind of notes and forms, but um, I, I really, really appreciate you all contributing so much to this event. Uh, thank you again to, to Shell for making this possible um, and, and supporting the conference as a whole. And um, hopefully you will be joining us for the next few sessions. So uh, tomorrow we have um, our uh, last section officer uh, updates where we're hearing all the amazing work coming from uh, at, the, at the regions. Uh, and then we have uh, a few more discussion topics like this. Uh, the next one this time tomorrow uh, will be on the reality of future jobs in the industry. So I'm sure that will uh, lend into this topic as well. And then on Friday, we are very excited to have some um, CEOs coming to share their um, expertise uh, to students and YPs uh, going forward. So um, some really great sessions. Again, we're doing so much this week. If you can't watch it all, please do watch it on the YouTube channels. Um, and uh, it's been really great having you. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, all of you. It's been very interesting. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Hey, everyone. Bye-bye.